Hello VR addicts, welcome to my channel. I am Paolo Triani and today I'm going to do the first impressions of the Valve Index because I've getting a lot of people asking when am I going to give my review on it and uh, personally I, you know, I'm not ready to give my review on it so I'll just give the first impressions of what I like and what I don't like. Um, and I'm going to compare it a little bit to the Rift S. I know we all said like, oh, you should compare it to Rift S because it's in two different categories. But since we've tried them both, a lot of us we've worked out that they really end in two different type of characters. You know, what I mean, they're both enthusiast headsets. They're both fantastic. Um, they both have their flaws, and they're both you know uh, are worth having. So let's get on to the Valve Index. This is my Valve Index just here and the interesting thing is the build quality that everyone goes on about right everyone says the build quality is really good the build quality is really good it's all solid it's all fantastic but that doesn't mean that the build quality is actually going to be good we'll have to wait in time to work that out you know um, but I think the weakest spots of this headset are going to be this bit here this little tiny piece of plastic it's very thin very thin and easily bendable that could easily snap so be careful of not you know causing any issues just there that's definitely going to be your weak spot the other weak spot is your your plastic front cover your front cover it's um just a piece of plastic it's very um i think it lasts but i think you could scratch it you could damage it and uh hopefully they'll make custom versions of this because we all want custom versions you know even if we don't have any fancy led lights in there it'd be nice to have um you know, like uh, your own logo on there, or you know, like your favourite game, or, or something really cool. I got this the wrong way around now. We, oui, my sherry, I do. It's also recessed. It's also recessed. Almost looks like it's a completely like engineering bodge job that it's recessed, but it's not. It's intentional because obviously, when I lifted that off a second ago, uh, you can see there's vents. Right, so those vents are going to be completely useless if it's not recessed a little, letting air out around the edges. So that makes a lot of sense. But I think that they're the two weak spots, and and to be honest, that's fantastic because that goes to show how uh, well made the headset is, and it is pretty well made. The I don't think you're going to have problems with the speakers. Like where it connects up, I think it's pretty solid as well. I think you're going to be okay there. Um, I think the magnetic pull out of this is also fine I think that's going to do really well it's quite bulky you, you do think that when you take this out it could have probably been a little bit more uh, less weight on there uh, and the padding around the edges and all that feels nice looks nice um, when you're wearing it it's it's not as nice in my opinion but that's just my opinion um, but I like the fact that it doesn't really catch a lot of hair, especially when you've got a lot of pets. Um, not too sure about the sweat. It does get very hot, as you wear it. Hopefully, well know it gets very hot. This uh, this VR headset. Um, oh yeah, the field of view. I only talk about that field of view on the vision. I'm going to go on about the vision as well. And I've also got a little tiny bits of the lenses that really catch my eye a little bit. Um, the field of view didn't really kind of blow it for me. My, my Rift S, I tested the Rift S and I get about 90 horizontal. This, uh, what I was talking about, field of view. So I, I actually got 20 field of view. Um, vertical field of view, I didn't get much difference. Um, I didn't get much difference uh, on the field of view uh, at the top, but the, uh, Horizontal field of view, I did. Um, I got like ten extra difference, so that's fantastic on the uh, on, on the index. Um, but it did blow me away, like compared to the Rift S. It's it's really weird because I didn't really care. Like when I went from the Rift S to this, I didn't really care. When I go back, when when I go from this back to the Rift S, I kind of notice it. Um, so and then I kind of enjoy having the extra field of view. So yeah, it's it's obviously it's not a thing that can be ever negative, can it? it? You know, more field of view is always better. But pushing the thing right up into your eye socket when you push it too far, it, it's it, it can be a little bit more. Uh, it can be a bit too painful. And uh, yeah, 
so you have to get it the right distance away so you know yes that hundred that, that 20 extra field of view is me like like resting the lenses on my eye sockets and uh and when I mean my eye socket, I don't mean my eye because I actually have recessed eyes. If you can't see, my eyes are actually going inwards a little bit more and I have this kind of Neanderthal kind of eyebrow kind of going on. So when the lens is hit, it actually smacks against the socket, not against my actual eye. And uh, when it uh, goes against the socket, it's it's literally, uh, it's when it, it applies quite a bit of pressure here. And I actually have some damage here in my brain, which causes me to get a lot of migraines. And it shoots down to this bit here so i've got a headache and then i've got that lens shoved against it and i'm in vr it's like yeah, it's quite a nightmare it's 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 just really bad um you do still see screen door effect in this you some of you might not because you you, you know you don't have to, well, it's dependent isn't it really uh, but you do still get screen door on this but this is the best i've seen for screen door yet um it's pretty fantastic when it comes to screen door um it's better than the rift s the Rift S is obviously a smaller resolution. It's really weird though, even though it's a smaller resolution than the Vive Index, the Rift S um, uh, has really a small amount of uh, screen door effect. Uh, and this is, you kind of feel this would have been a tiny bit smaller if it used the exact same LCD panel maybe, but it's, it's not so, you know, um, but this is smaller at the end of the day it's still smaller in here and um, that's fantastic the clarity uh, minus the glare and god rays is pretty good I did see Mora once in a game um, so there is a game out there that causes Mora because <laughs> it's definitely not in the other games um, so no Mora pretty much uh, I didn't really look for chromatic aberrations if I'm gonna be honest I didn't notice them so that's a good start um, and uh, this dog's constantly attention seeking for me and then when it's on my lap it's doesn't know what to do it's weird uh, I don't know why we put up with looking after dogs and cats and stuff we've got so many now with five cats three dogs in the house two snakes one hamster the zoo in here um, I suppose it's a good deed it's a good deed um, yeah so the uh, screen's pretty good. The glare is horrific, and some people don't notice this as much as others. But if you don't notice it, it's just like the FPS, you know, the, like the 144 FPS. It's exactly similar to that. You probably won't notice the higher frame rate, but it's still happening, right? So the glare is there, and the glare is still happening. You might not notice it, but it's an artifact that's there, and it is going to, uh, even if you, it's not going to ruin your game if you don't notice it. But it probably will kind of put some strain on your eyes and some stress. Ooh, did you just yawn? Um, yeah, and it'll put some stress on your eyes. Oh. Do you want to get down? Do you want to go across my uh, lights again? Yes, you do, don't you? Okay, a lot of editing going to go on this one, isn't there? Uh, the glare, the glare is still going to be there regardless of uh, you being able to see it or not, and that's going to cause some issues. Um, the God rays, I, I said the God rays were about the same as the uh, Rift S, but the Rift S has got this weird thing where you can like uh, have, you know, it's got a button that pushes it all the way in and pushes it out. If you push it all the way out, you will have nearly no God rays. If you push it all the way in, as far as it goes, you get better field of view but you also get more god rays so yeah uh that's generally you know what happens with the rift s and i do think that this does have more god rays than the rift s and it's really weird because the glare is kind of like a god ray it's almost like it comes out it's like a super god ray it's like a super bad god ray that comes completely out of the screen and causes a massive glare um I was going to say is it like uh, when I thought I heard about it, I thought maybe it was like light bleed, but it's uh, LED light packed light bleed, but it's not. It's actually like it's coming from those areas and it's pretty bad. Um, so yeah, that's that's the nail in the coffin for for it a little bit, you know. That's one nail in anyway out of the God knows how many. Um, so the glare is quite bad. You can live with it though because you've lived with it the CV1 and the Vive. Well. It's kind of the vibes more glare and the CV, uh, the Rift was more God rays to me, I think. I'm not entirely sure. It's definitely God rays on the Rift. 
the CV1. Um, and I hated God rays. I hated God rays. Worst my worst thing I hate is you know God rays. I mean, I didn't even mind screen door effects. It's what you can live with, really, isn't it? But it all takes you out of the experience. It all can put stress on you. So you know the the best thing to do is get rid of as many artifacts as possible in a VR headset. Um, and uh, I think uh, Valve kind of messed up a little bit there with the glare, though. But everything else seems to be really good. Going for this. The blacks, though. Let's talk about the blacks. Now, some people say the blacks are better in this than they are in the Rift S, but then you go play Vader Immortal, and then suddenly you think, oh my god, the Rift S blacks are amazing compared to this. This is absolutely horrific for blacks. Um, but I think it might be, I think they're pretty similar, and I think it might be game dependent, you know? Um, some games might look better in this, some games might not, but at the end of the day, the truth is, is the blacks suck on both. <laughs> They're not an OLED panel, they're not going to be great. And the worst part about it is it's not just like what the blacks look like, it's what the blacks do to the following colors next to the blacks. You know, the, the colors can be suddenly washed out. If you're in a really dark area and there's some colors in that dark area, obviously if you're in complete darkness, everything goes black and white almost, but, well, not almost, it does. But if you've got like a dimly lit area and uh, slight lighting effects and stuff like that, that you get in something like Vader Immortal, um, you, you can get washed out colors and washed out silvers and washed out effects. Um, and that's what LCD kind of like does. That's why OLED is the king because OLED won't do that. Uh, but you will get black uh, smudging kind of um, problems. But uh, I rarely ever noticed that. In fact, I, I never even heard of it until this year. So um, barely ever noticed it. And I've had the CV1 for ages. Uh, and other OLEDs like Samsung Odyssey and etc. The screen, though, the 1600p is really nice. Um, it's only a tiny bit better, I'd say, than the Rift S, but that's because with the Rift S, you can super sample a lot more. With this one, you can't, um, unless you uh, restrict it to the same frame rate, probably. Uh, 144 hertz is hard to achieve in a lot of, a lot of the times, and the, the, the bad part about it as well is when it does reproject, it will jump down to 72. Uh, uh, and then you're playing games at 72 FPS <laughs> and it's reprojecting and a reprojection on, on, on Valve is nowhere near as, uh, as nice. Um, some games, uh, also other problems is, is some games um, don't work with this, which we already know because it's, it's been, uh, been drama and uh, it should have been quite simple I think for, for the games to work with this. Um, obviously the headset isn't the problem kind of here. It's more of the controllers under the index controllers. And we're gonna go more into that later, obviously, because there's clickbait to talk about as well. Click gate, clickbait, clickbait, click gate. Um, and I wrote some uh, games here. Space Ops VR, um, the controllers don't work uh, with the uh, index. So you can't use the index controllers unless you map them. And there's no preset mappings from other people because well, the game's dying, and it shouldn't be. It's a pretty decent game. Um, Fallout 4, uh, I had um, some ghosting issues with this. Uh, it was quite a few issues here and there, but ghosting was one of them, um, even when it wasn't reprojecting, and it was, and I managed to get it to run a higher frame rate, it was still causing some horrific kind of ghosting. Um, there was also uh, controller issues as well, but uh, there is some user profiles and they uh, don't work neither really they're pretty pretty poor hopefully um we'll get a fix for that air mech now this is to, there's no, no there's no sound on air mech you go into air mech it works pretty all right you can work out how to use the controller the the air, the uh, index controllers the knuckle controllers do work in air mech um just mapped a bit weird but there's no sound, so no sound you can't really play unless you have it pumped through a different sound. It won't come through these these uh, audios just here. Transference I had a problem with as well. The again the, the mapping with the controller, and then there's like uh, revive as well. I tried a few revive games. The the Morgan um, come up with an error message when you try to start this through revive. Um, Space Pipe Trainer just doesn't start at all. On revive, an order curve starts up, but it doesn't come to the to the to the index. It just uh, starts up onto your screen, and 
uh, doesn't doesn't work at all really. And it's, there's tons of games that do work on this, like Moss natively it seems to work pretty well. I thought um, uh, Serious Sam uh, games, uh, the, was it Last Hope? That worked pretty good. Um, From Other Sons on Revive worked worked well. It, it, it was a bit hard to use the um, grip because you have to grip the gun, don't you? And it means pressing a bit more harder on the grip to grab the gun. Other than that, it, it seemed pretty fine. Uh, lots of guns, uh, uh, lots of games work on Revive still. Just those ones didn't. Uh, let's talk about the audio. Everyone loves these au the, the audio and there's a good reason too. It has actually pretty good all around sound. The bass is, is a bit high, um, but that's not, like I said, you could put a bass super, super high and no one's gonna complain because people just love bass. Um, but normally bass drowns out all the other stuff. So when the bass is normally this high, yeah, good luck on hearing footsteps and all the other little tiny sounds. But wait, they've pulled a miracle here because you can. <laughs> I actually tested this yesterday and you can actually uh, still hear footsteps yeah, through the bass, the explosions and everything. And um, it's even worked better than the, uh, slightly better than the uh, Mantis headphones on my Rift S. Um, obviously works a million <laughs> green screen again, sorry the dog. Um, the Mantis headphones, uh, sometimes uh, that was like a little bit more muffled to hear the footsteps in shooting games. Um, bass is a little bit more louder on here than the Mantis. And the clarity is just a tiny bit better as well on here than the Mantis. Um, I even tried the original sound on the Rift S, but yeah, let's, let's not talk about that. That's, um, <laughs> That's literally baseless. It's, it's, it claims it's, well, it has got a little bit of bass, but it's like if, if this was a bass of 100, then the Rift S would be a bass of two. You know, the Mantis headset would be a Rift bass of, it would be a bass of what, 75, maybe 80 or something like that. That's kind of the difference here. Um, I find that these are not that loud though. They don't seem to go very loud. So if you wanted them really loud to blow off your eardrums to sort of like, you know, drown out the sounds of uh, a house full of children or whatever. It uh, doesn't work, but it's great when your wife comes up to you and says to you like, you know, oh, why haven't you cut the grass yet? And you know, you normally, you know, if you just, if you're wearing something like the Mantis headphones, for instance, on which are a bit more blocky, you know, you wouldn't hear it. And then she'll have to say it again and then again, and then you're dead, you know, you, you know, you're pretty much dead. With these, at least you can hear it. And then you go, oh yeah, 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 I'll do, I'll do it in a minute. So it kind of it's kind of life saving. These these are life saving. They need they need to be t taught that they're life saving. So the audio is brilliant. The microphone is brilliant. But I'm not entirely sure if it's as good as everyone says it is. And I'm going to do a video on that just to make sure. Um, but it is good. It's definitely good enough. And I've done some videos with that mic myself. The Rift S mic, everyone says, is not that great. But I kind of found it to be better than crap. Um, so yeah, this is probably the best mic in a VR headset that I've heard and the Rift S is not as bad as what everyone makes it out to be so uh, but this is clearly the winner um, and uh, you can see uh, one other thing with the visuals as well is where you can see the lines of the uh, Fresnel lenses Fresnel lenses and uh, with the Rift S you, you, you can't really see it as much it's it's more prominent on this as well so not only you've got God, God rays uh, you've also got the the lenses thing as well going on and uh, oh. um, what else is there to talk about how have I enjoyed it in games let's go to just talk about games a little bit I think really I mean I've been playing loads of games in this because I've been just jumping in and I'll just talk about the, the Hertz of it the 144 Hertz now a lot of people said what's your favorite thing well the first thing you notice what well, the first thing I would have noticed would have been how the clarity looks. I mean, we talk about clarity, yes, we've got God rays and uh, and those uh, lines, ceramic circles on the Fresnel lenses. Um, but the clarity uh, is quite sharp, but it's not gonna blow me away because I had a Rift S and a Rift S was pretty sharp. It was a step up. This is just a tiny bit more of a step up, but also it, gets, it would have been a lot more of a step up, I think if we didn't have the uh, god rays and the glare and the, the circle on the lenses um, causing some more uh, knockdowns for it but it's still still a tad bit higher than the Rift S 
uh, and you got the larger field of view. So, uh, and the larger field of view didn't get me neither. And the audio didn't get made because I've got plenty of very good audio headsets. Um, you can see the the uh, Alpha Pros just there. They're actually pretty good. They're not as bassy as these, but it does a really good job of separating the sound. It's very it's very good. Very good pair of uh, quality headset. And um, and the mic didn't blow me away, but the frame rate did. And I I like the frame rates. Um, I never, I never used to see frame rate before. I used to be like everybody else didn't really notice it. But I've become more in tuned since I've got 120 hertz uh, ultra wide monitor just just there, and um, that uh, when when I'm playing something like Battlefield 5 on that, and that jumps from 120 down to 80 or something like that, it's a pain in the ass headache. But if you play something like Battlefield like at 60, and then you play at 120, you can tell the difference is smoother. Uh, and even if you can't tell the difference of 144 hertz, it's still happening. Like I said, the, the smoothness is still happening, the effect. This is an effect, you can't actually see 144 hertz. If you could see 144 hertz, life would be horrible because you'd be able to see every other, every frame. Um, it's supposed to not be able to see every other frame. It, it, you know, The reason why some people can see it smoother and you can't is probably because you can probably separate frames a little bit more easier. Uh, who knows? You know, or maybe you can't do it at all, and uh, 60 kind of just moving up. You know, um, but it's happening. You know, 144 hertz. The effect of having 144 hertz, which is like smoothing, less blur, etc., like that, it is happening. And you can see it when you get jump into games like Beat Saber, where it's just more pleasurable. Um, and I said this, like, you know, I don't know why Valve did this. I thought this was the most stupidest idea ever, and I still do because I don't understand why Valve would go uh, with a uh, higher frame rate than a higher resolution because they're going to spoil us too soon. And I kind of still feel that way because I kind of feel that uh, we're going to get adjusted to a higher frame rate already and then we're not going to be able to go back. Some of us are not going to be able to go back. I, I will be able to go back because I can adjust quite easily because um, it's not light and day. Like everyone says, you know, it's not light and day. Um, but I think that you know a higher resolution like 4K would have been, you know, 2K per eye would have been amazing on this, and then work, you know, as soon as we get that clarity that we really want, uh, you know, like from a distance though, not just in front of us, we want it so we can look at like whose horizons off into the distance and it look nice and clear, like read a number plate from the right distance away or whatever on a car, you know. I think then they should have like probably bumped up the uh, frame rate and then we could have had that. Uh, pleasure but they seem to have jumped the gun and done it already which means now we're spoiled with it and we kind of want it a little bit more and it's um, noticeable it's not noticeable so much on the rift when you go to certain games but I've gone from this from Beat Saber on on this uh, around about 130 or 100 Hertz um, to 80 Hertz on the rift s and immediately you know I can tell the difference it just doesn't look as smooth I mean the, the blocks come to you and they kind of look a bit more blurred out as they're coming towards to you where they're so much more smoother it's almost like I don't know uh, when, when it comes to you a bit more smoother obviously the graphics uh, you know the resolution you're getting like in this particular case 1600p stays kind of 1600p when that block comes towards you where with the Rift S, where it's 1440p, it will blur out a little bit as it comes to you because it's coming real quick, especially on fast, faster games um, like Beat Saber. So yeah, and I wanted to try Audicron on this, but as you can see, I've got Audicron on the Oculus Store and it didn't work at all. Uh, but the frame rate, yes, uh, the frame rate stands out and it's fantastic. I absolutely love the frame rate. I've got it 144 hertz now, but I can't. I've got like a 2080 Ti and I can barely play anything with that anyway. So um, I'm now thinking, what do I do? Do I super sample at maybe 90 hertz uh, or do I uh, leave it 144 hertz and maybe down sample? But I'm thinking the other way around at the moment. I'm trying the hertz out, but I'm thinking, you know, I'd rather, you know, I don't want to go around in a blurry environment. Uh, it's, it seems weird having 144 hertz to make it more smoother and sharper, uh, faster paced games when um, you got it blurry to begin with, right? Uh, seems stupid. Uh, but overall, you know, like first opinions, it's pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to go and talk about the comfort because this is one of the things that most people say is amazing on this headset. I kind of feel the comfort on this headset 
it's pretty damn good but it feels a little front heavy um, to me and it's, if I hold it here you can see even with this cable yanking it down a little bit because this is the thickest cable out of all the headsets I've ever had um, it does drop a little bit at the front now I don't know if you can actually see that then you're gonna have to take my word for it um, it drops a little bit at the front so it's a little bit front heavy but it has enough strap in to keep it strapped in so it doesn't do what the Quest does which I'm going to be honest with the Quest is about 10 times worse than this when it comes to front heavy so yeah it's it's a little bit uh, I don't find it as comfortable as everyone keeps raging about I have to keep adjusting it and the sweet spot is a little bit more uh, finicky for me even though it's not that unsimilar to the Rift S um, and it is not like completely sweet all the way to the edges for me. It's 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 literally It's like a it's like 90 field of view and then the 20 field of view is a bit more blurrier, which is okay um, You can live with that, you know, it's just my IPD if you got a higher one I think you'd get a better like mine's like 60 or 65. I've got it at 60. This weird thing is 65 on this and it's 60 on everything else. So that's odd and uh, yeah, the comfort on this is uh, I it's it's not bad, it's not bad at all. I can live with it quite easily. Uh, but I think the Rift S, I love the comfort of the Rift S. Uh, I think if you look at the Rift S, it's also front heavy. Look, but it also uh, because it's front heavy, it doesn't really matter because it's got the halo design, which it's kind of wants to be front heavy because it wants to put all the pressure on this part here of your head. And I think the Rift S is, is more comfortable um, headset. Uh, the padding, you know, around the uh, the screen here and all that um, isn't so comfortable when you first put it on, but and then afterwards it just sits and it feels fine. Um, the weakest spots on this, by the way, are uh, is the back bit here, which feels a little tiny bit weak. Um, I think that's pretty much the weakest spot of the headset. And uh, watch. You see that wobble where it connects, where it starts slides in and out. It, this is the weakest part as well. This headset's got a different kind of like um, turning knob. The turning knob's only made to go outwards. You, you push it in when you want to go inwards. So if you're constantly readjusting your headset for your head, it's probably because you're accidentally pushing it in when you shouldn't be pushing it in. Um, that will probably save wear and tear on this, and then you won't break it so much. And uh, the build quality is is okay. I think it's just like you know there's just parts like that that's wobbling there's just a few parts it's about 50% build quality difference 50% lower than uh, the, the, the index for sure probably even more but you know it's cheaper it's a lot cheaper so like when it comes to the headsets which one would I uh, recommend well this is the point though isn't it really it's really hard to recommend which headset would be best for a personal individual because it's you know it's it's different i like both of these headsets and if somebody said like you know would you want to get rid of any of them i would be like hell no you know i, I actually quite enjoying them both right now uh so you know, let me go back to the recommended part let me just talk about these controllers because obviously you know about the click gate right so the left controller doesn't click inwards when you move forward now mine uh, they say that this is index come out uh, valve come out and said this is that something that the control is meant to be like um, Which is just really because if it was meant to be like that that would have been something you would have told everybody like, Oh, we don't have a clickable front bit because of this 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 but they didn't say anything until people started mining and it's obvious PR crap so Yeah, because I mean this one does it doesn't it does it this one clicks this one doesn't click when you go up or down and uh, side to side is a bit kind of tight as well. I actually tested it in uh, Pavlov to see if it still registers, and it does register, but you have to give it some oomph, you know? You have to really press to get it to register, and uh, I think uh, Sebastian from MRTV uh, mentioned the same thing with his, so and he's returning his, and a lot of people are returning theirs. Um, because of that issue. Um, some people have had other issues with the uh, triggers and all sorts of issues with them, but Now the thing is with the index controllers is though it um, It doesn't feel very ergonomic neither it feels I mean obviously doing this is just amazing, you know not having to hold it and all that 
but it doesn't feel very uh, ergonomic. And the reason for this is because the the thumbstick feels almost like it's in the wrong place. It doesn't look like it's canted right. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't feel that comfortable at all. Uh, as much you do get kind of used to it, just like with any. Well, I do. I'm very good with controllers. I've never mind about the DualShock Three. Never mind about DualShock Four. Never mind about any of the Xbox ones. Never mind about the nunchucks uh, on the Switch or whatever. And I even love my Mega Drive controllers in the day. I'm not somebody that goes, oh, they're cramping my hands. You know, they're just. You know, I don't mind that much, but. You do kind of get spoilt when you've had good controllers. Um, I can live with these controllers. I don't think I can live with a click. It feels almost like, you know, feels kind of bad. But uh, the recharge is pretty good on them. Um, you can charge them pretty quickly through the uh, Type-C connectors, which is fantastic. Obviously, they're free. The hand tracking seems to be okay for me. I not really got to use them because there's just nothing there to use them with. Content is just crap for it. Absolutely rubbish, if we're going to be honest with you. Uh, this is my uh, Rift um, uh, Rift S. Uh, new, the new touch controllers. Uh, the new touch controllers. Um, I've got the thingy for these as well, the, the cheap ones though, not the really expensive ones. And these cheap ones are still holding up actually, through a lot of pain and crap. And they, But they uh, chafe a little bit around here for me, they chafe. Um, so that's one thing I've learned um, by using them, that they, they, they can be a little bit more uh, uncomfortable after a long, long use. So much uncomfortable actually, I've wanted to take them off, but I can't take them off because I want to uh, give them a proper review. Uh, and uh, the, these controllers feel amazing. I just like literally put that on and I'm holding these right now and it feels like I'm not holding anything. It's just, oh, so nice. I can't keep remembering you guys there, not there. Um, yeah, the, these feel really nice, I gotta admit. Everyone says the touch ones are better and that's probably true. They, they probably are better, but these aren't that far behind. They're, they're really nice. Um, and I just bought 100 flipping batteries on Prime Day for, for, for this as well. Fantastic uh, controllers. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the recommended part. Would I recommend them? Well, the thing is, is if you've already got like lighthouses, um, yeah, I, I could re recommend the Index. And also, if you're IPD 65 and above, or 67 and above, I can also recommend the Index. It's very pricey, maybe wait for a sale. Um, if your IPD will fit in the Rift S, and it's no worries in trying out because the refund system I think is pretty decent. We can get it from Amazon, so you know, easy peasy. Um, with the Rift S, there's no IPD adjustment, um, so you know it's about if you fit in that area or not. And if you do fit in that area, then you're going to get a good clarity. It's, you're going to get a good quality headset. The only issue with the Rift S is that you're going to need. Uh, some other type of headphones or earplugs. If you've got some, you know, earphones, earplugs, headphones that you can use with the Rift S, then you're going to be fine. You're not going to want to use the audio it comes with because it's just immersion breaking. Um, so yeah, you're going to need a, a sound system. Now there's a massive price dif difference as well. So it's like four hundred pound, uh, four hundred pounds or four hundred dollars for the Rift S. Um, a hundred dollar, a thousand dollars, or nine hundred and nineteen pounds for the index. Don't know what that'd be for euros, but I'm guessing more. Um, so there's a massive price difference. I don't think the index full kit is worth that amount of money, personally. I don't think anyone does really. The, 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 these these controllers, I think, are very very pricey. They are well built, though. I do. You know, I think some people say they look flim, feel flimsy. I think if you dropped it, you could probably break the the ring part, maybe. But you know, that that could happen with any controller, like even the touch ones. Um, but I think it feels kind of it feels heavy though. Um, and this is the reason why, when this is on your hand, doing this, it feels like it's still in your hand. Where with the um, touch controllers, even when I was gripping it, it felt less like it was in my hand <laughs> than this because it's just so much lighter. So it's a shame that this is heavy. Um, but other than that, I think the build quality is alright, and I think the um, even the um, thumbsticks feel 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 fine, and the buttons feel have a nice click. It's just the trigger button is got this weird after click. Hear that? That's weird. That's almost like it's 
tapping on something, it's it's triggered way before then. So that extra click, I don't know what that's about. Um, I like the padding around the uh, knuckle part as well. I think they're well built. I think they're they're well built. I you know, like I said, I think that's just something that people have to get used to the feel of them. They might be not as ergonomic as the touch, but they're they're a huge improvement. And um, you know, the the hand thing is is amazing. We just need content in that area, but they're priced way too high. And then do I have to talk about the lighthouses? The lighthouses are just too too expensive. The headset itself is priced not too bad actually. It's pretty good considering how well it's made. It's uh, and how good the headphones you get with it as well. Um, I think it's priced pretty pretty okay. Um, so if, like I said, if you've already got all the setup, you, you, you kind of like you know you you probably do really well with this. Um, if you're affected by uh, God rays and glares, the Rift S is is a better option. But then you still got to look into that IPD if you fit into that IPD. So both headsets are fantastic. Um, so far, in my opinion, some of them have their faults, some of them don't have their faults. They're kind of like yin yang, and uh, one of them's very pricey, one of them's not so pricey. Uh, I think they'll both will last quite a long time. Uh, yeah, one's got like artifacts on the screen, the other one's got very lacking of artifacts. One of them's got better field of view, one of them's got amazing audio. Uh, <laughs> one of them's got better tracking. Let's talk about the tracking as well. The tracking's been faultless for me. I've enjoyed the tracking of the index, it's been absolutely amazing. The Rift S tracking has had a huge improvement with its update recently of 1.39, and now you can actually play shooting games with it, um, even though the tracking's still probably. Um, tiny bit not as good as the index still but I I could easily play with the Rift S in, in an FPS game and still probably do really well uh, so don't worry about that too much anymore I would have said look you know if you wanted to just play shooting games all the time and all that don't get the Rift S but since the update the Rift S has been a lot more better uh, in that regards and that's really good for in, in an uh, inside out tracking games on Oculus store like i said revive is not going to let you play every single game like i mentioned audica if you've got audica on the rift store you're not going to play that on the index not at the moment anyway space pirate simulator it's space pirate trainer sorry um it's not working either uh, and the morgan is obviously not working as well um other games like from other sons and um carnage chronicles and uh they do work and uh robot recall i think works as well yeah, both are really good headsets. I don't know what to ask to say. I mean, I, could, I couldn't, it's about doing your own research here. Watch what I've said about the videos. If all this fits your categories, get it. If you've got the money, the index is a great option. Um, if you ain't got the money, then look into your IPD and see if you can get a Rift S. S simple as that. The Rift S has got a bit more clarity in the way that there's no artifacts to interfere. Obviously, the um, index is a tiny bit sharper, um, especially over a distance. Um, colors are pretty much the same. Uh, brightness is probably a little bit more better in the index, but it's very similar. I mean, I'm talking about uh, you know a noticeable difference almost. Um, field of view obviously is better in the index. That's all you need to know. Well, anyway, if you like this uh, first opinion video on uh, the index, please give me a thumbs up or a like, whatever you want to call it. Um, please also subscribe and also please hit the bell button if you want to watch more videos like this. And uh, yeah, I love you long time. Ciao.